Welcome, Mr. Bologna. Thank you. It's lovely to have you. Lovely to be here. So, first of all, I'm grateful that you're willing to kick it off. Uh, you are the man of the hour. Uh, but I wanted you to kick it off, actually, because I think you've done a lot of really interesting things with Modi. So let's just start by telling us the history of Modi, its inception, and where you are today and where you've come last year. So The whole thing that's made my hair gray in the past uh, 14 I months? I do not see salt and pepper. I only see pepper. Too posh. <laughs> so I've, uh, I've been working with the agency that I've been for the past, uh, this is my 17th year. Uh, predominantly in the sort of emerging side of the television business and you know we've always been talking about the evolution of television and where it's going as it relates to data and technology and 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 targeting and sort of the, the improvement of it and about 18 months ago we decided that it was really time to, to to stop talking and 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 organize you know but it was but it's not easy right our, our clients are not you they're used to broad demography as opposed to hyper segments right the 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 industry it's it, to take First party data, third party data, match it against subscriber files, identify who's living in a household, send a commercial to a specific household, ignore the others. That's a lot of work. That's, that's not an easy thing. <coughs> and, it's, and, it, and it's not something the clients actually understand and it's not something that the industry is, is, is well equipped to handle. So long story short, we decided that we were, gonna, we were gonna hit this head on. We were gonna create an organization within our organization with a group of people that did nothing every day but focus on the future of television as it relates to data and technology. And that's, and that, and that's really why we launched Modi. I mean, you know, the, the, the general media practitioners, they're, they're busy, they're managing clients, they're handling accounts, and you know, they don't have time to dig into the minutia of this. So we really wanted to create, a, uh, to create the best product that we can, and we assembled a group of people, and now there's 21 of us, 14 months later. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, on that, first of all, I think that was uh, ambitious and uh, and a great objective. But I want to understand: was it was it a push or pull at the time that you guys started the conception? Right? I mean, were you you know were, were your clients on the coattails saying we want more data driven television buying, or was this something you were anticipating? Um, I guess it was a combination of both. You know, I'd be lying if I said that it was a it was a complete push. But we knew that if we were ever going to transition our advertisers from that mass one to many approach that we've been living with for so many years to a more data driven targeted approach we had to productize it right the media piece the pieces of media and the media channels that work the best are ones that are mature and productized no new media tactic ever goes smoothly so if we were ever going to really deliver this new wave of television to the advertisers in a way that they'll be able to understand it, utilize it, value it, and see the results. We had to we had we had to really create we had to simplify it and create products, and that's really what Modi's all about. It's taking the minutia out of it and creating products. So I want to get into sort of your lines of business. I think you've yeah. done a great job of that, but let's flip over to the from the buy side to the sell side, right? Sure. So on the supply side, were you pushing or pulling? On the supply side, we're always always pushing, right? The supply side is, I mean. That's where it gets complicated, right? There's, you know, right now the majority of targeted television <laughs> are products of cable, satellite, and telco systems, right? It's their boxes, it's many cases, it's their data, it's their infrastructure, but they all do it differently. They all use different technology, they all use different data sets, they all have a different process. So in order for us to scale this marketplace, to create that product, to simplify and deliver to the advertiser where they see value, we need to align all of them, and that's that can be like that can be a challenge. So it's definitely a push. On their end, they're definitely pushing as well because this is all new revenue for them. So, so let's circle back to how you've organized because I think the way you've established the lines of business in Modi is is, uh, is a testament to sort of how you look at the marketplace. Talk me through the, the lines of business and the products. <clears throat> we have four lines of business, right? The first was really what Modi was born out of, and that's what we're calling. Uh, digital distribution, right? For a long time, we have been managing the marketing for several movie studios when they promote their movies on pay-per-view and EST. When it leaves the theaters, when it leaves the DVD, and it goes to the, to the, to the VOD and pay-per-view system, right? That's a whole different level of marketing. We analyze sales data based on operator, market, zone, zip code, household, and react the advertising accordingly. And that was really the foundation of Modi. We then led into the targeted side of, of Modi, which is the household level addressability that, that a lot of us are here talking about, and what we call the hyper-local section of Modi, which is zip and zone level targeting. Then the fourth product is, is what we're calling interactive and connected television. And that's starting to assemble all of the smart TVs and smart devices that make TV smart to create advertising products for that. And if you look back in the last year, 
you know, I mean, we've been throwing around the words addressable and programmatic and interactive, right? It was like ITV five, yes. four years ago, right? There's sort of a new lexicon of this idea of television that results in greater ROI. Just, right, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the bogey. Um, I mean, realistically, in which of those lines of business do you feel like you have the greatest momentum? By far, right now, we have the greatest momentum in the addressable space, right? There's 42 million US TV households. That's a third of every TV household that has the ability to insert a commercial to the set-top box level. That's huge, that's huge. And within the majority of those homes, we're actually, for the very first time, able to close that loop in television and demonstrate to the advertiser this household saw your commercial, this household became a customer, this household bought an automobile, this household tuned into a program. That's really, really good stuff considering we live in a world where the majority of the metrics for television are TV commercial on, we sell soup. So realistically though, how does, I mean if we're at the zone, you know, zip plus four sort of household level, I mean, realistically, how much is first party data in that equation? So a lot of that depends on the advertiser. So we have, we probably have eight advertisers right now where they give us their, their customer list, the list of customers. That gets matched against the subscriber files of all the various systems. We determine within that system's footprint what percentage of those households are those customers or non-customers. Then we overlay some third-party data to further refine the list, and then we use the technology in the boxes to fire off those messages to the households we want at the right frequency at the right time. So I'm not going to ask for absolute numbers, but let's talk about two things. Sure. What the market's bearing in regards to lift and value of the inventory as a result of adding this level of targeting yeah. and addressability versus what you think it's worth. Okay, so that's the easiest way to answer that is we live in a market where everyone's used to adults 18 to 49, women 25 to 54, and we know the market is there. When you get into the targeted television, most advertisers today use it as a means to increase their frequency against a core customer segment. The size of that segment and the cost of the product or service they're selling is what help, is, are the two fact, primary factors we take into consideration when determining the value. The smaller the segment, obviously the higher the value. We work on a proposition called what we call an effective CPM. So let's just say that we want to target women with children under 12 that make over $60,000. The general buying demography for that would likely be women 25 to 54, and you'll let's just say that cost per thousand could be $10. Right. When you factor- That's up funnel that's when you're casting funnel. with the net, Absolutely, right? casting with the net. So you take everybody out of that equation that doesn't fit that hyper segment that we just discussed, that $10 is really more like $45. If I can precisely target that hyper segment at $23, that's a win-win for everyone. Sure, the advertiser is going to pay more, but they're paying much less than what they're actually paying for that hyper segment, which begs the, 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 one of the hardest questions in our business today. How do you balance the frequency between a mass approach and a targeted approach? So I know perhaps it sounds like semantics, but I do think that this will be a thematic in a lot of the conversations we have with some of your colleagues today. Is it really about targeting and addressable and reaching a specific audience, or is it about eliminating waste and efficiency? Because to be candid, from the buy side, we hear it's out of both sides of the mouth, right? Sure. Well, the, one, the challenge we have with any type of targeted TV, it's a very, very selfish business. Everybody has their hand out. Everybody wants to, wants, wants to get paid. Everybody wants to make money. So I would say that half of the conversations we have, the perspective we get, isn't necessarily the honest perspective, it can be the perspective that better suits our own interests. But to, but to really get to, the, get to the question, it's targeted television is about do two things. It's about refining our targets and reducing our waste. And if you do those two things properly, you will improve your ROI. There's no way you can't do it. Okay. And if you do it properly, everybody wins. The buy side wins, the advertiser wins, the sell side wins. Okay. Thanks, Mike.